Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Mary and today we're going to be talking about the impact of bamboo clothing. This is something I've been looking very much forward to talking about. I've already made a video about the impact of bamboo where we talk about the impact of bamboo used as a building material as well as those zero waste aesthetic bamboo cutlery sets that we see everywhere. But today we're going to be talking about the impact of bamboo clothing because it is slightly different from the impact of bamboo in and of itself. And a lot of you guys requested in the comments to that last video that I should talk about bamboo clothing, that you were disappointed that I didn't talk about bamboo clothing. And I know it's been a while, but I was thinking that I wanted to make an entire video just about this. Um, and this is that video right now, yeehaw. <laughs> so thank you so much for your patience. If you haven't already seen the other video, perhaps it's a good idea to do so because there are a lot of the things that we aren't going to cover in this video because I covered it already. Stuff like how bamboo is a natural pest repellent or how it can grow in really dry soils and in places like on slopes where trees can't normally grow and how bamboo growth actually benefits the soil quality. We've talked about how there are many great things to say about bamboo but there are also some cons that I think are important to mention. Again, the other video will go into more detail. But the bamboo production industry is quite untransparent and therefore it can be really hard as a consumer to figure out whether or not the bamboo that we are actually purchasing has been harmful to the environment. But today we're going to talk about bamboo clothing and how it's made. And while we're at it, we're also going to be talking about some of the claims about bamboo clothing and let's see how they hold up. Now, over the recent years, I've seen bamboo clothing being hyped up as a very sustainable material, as a very sustainable material that is an alternative to cotton. I've also made an impact video about cotton. So if you're interested about that sort of thing, I'll leave that down below. Cotton is also a really interesting thing to dive into. But the thing with bamboo is that it's been really hyped up to be a very sustainable product, but I'm not entirely sure that that holds up. But first of all, we have production. Now, when I was younger, my brother and I, we would play in our family yard. And in the very back of the yard, there was this huge bush area filled with bamboo bushes. And I think someone planted them in the 90s. They were huge. And we would break one off each. And then we would pretend that they were swords. And I remember the distinct feeling of being hit over the knee or over the fingers with this bamboo stick. It hurt so bad. And the moral of that story is don't engage in a pain contest with your brother. But something else I end up thinking about is how do you turn such a hard, tough material into something that is so nice and silky smooth? And in bamboo textile production, there are two ways of doing it. So now the first method is mechanical. Here you crush bamboo into a mush and with natural enzymes you break down the hard plant fiber. Then you comb through the fibers and spin it into yarn. This type of fabric is usually referred to as bamboo linen. It is the more sustainable option of the two but it is nowhere perfect but it does have potential to be very sustainable. The downside to this method is that it's very labor intensive and thus it's very expensive to produce. And the finished result is not this smooth, silky, soft, nice garment. It's more like linen or hemp. And the other method is chemical. And I assume you can see where I'm going with this. Here the bamboo plant is cooked in a mix of chemical solvents like sodium hydroxide, lye and carbon disulfide. These chemicals have not only proven dangerous to human health, they're also extremely dangerous to marine life when flushed out as wastewater. The production of chemically making bamboo textiles is very similar to the production of viscose and rayon. And while it's often advertised as a green alternative to cotton and other materials, there's a huge chemical impact because of the amount of chemical processing required. It's actually not unfair to describe both bamboo, viscose and rayon as synthetic materials or semi-synthetics, if you will. Today, about 95% of bamboo textiles is bamboo viscose and made through chemical processing. Actually, synthetic materials can be divided into two groups. The first one being man-made cellulose fibers like viscose, rayon, and bamboo. And the other one being petroleum-based or plastic-based fibers like polyester, acrylic, and nylon. I think it's important to remember this distinction and also in other videos where I've talked about this, I've seen a lot of people correcting me in the comments saying that rayon is based on wood, so it's not a synthetic fiber, but by all criteria, it is. To get an idea of the amount of processing required to make bamboo viscose, I brought this visual. By the time this chemical processing has occurred, it's not actually bamboo anymore. And that's why the Federal Trade Commission has said the following. When bamboo is processed into rayon, no trace of the original plant is left. If a company claims its product is made with bamboo, it should have reliable scientific evidence to show it's made with bamboo fiber. 
a natural result of bamboo clothing being hyped as sustainable material is increased demand. And that comes with consequences. One of the consequences of an increased demand for bamboo clothing is mono plantations. Because so many consumers are finding the eco bordering on greenwashing, advertising of bamboo garments as a sustainable alternative to cotton attractive, more and more bamboo is grown for the sake of textile production. And this results in mono plantations. This is when a huge area of land is only devoted to growing one type of plant and that has serious consequences for biodiversity because in order to have an ecosystem that thrives, many different types of plants and animals has to be present in order to make the ecosystem work. And in an area with only one type of plant, that cannot happen. As a result, a monoculture can kill off thousands of different animal species and plants in the surrounding areas. And because of this, we will see a surplus of other types of animals, like pests. This is the reason why mono plantations have more pests, because there is no functioning ecosystem to keep that amount down. As a result, farmers will have to use more pesticides in order to deliver the amount of products that they're being paid for. And this is in every aspect of the word an ecological nightmare. The amazing pest repellent qualities of bamboo is made completely irrelevant when the bamboo crops are facing an unnatural amount of pests. So they'll need to use pesticides. But is bamboo more sustainable than viscose? The short and uncomplicated answer that no one asked for is yes, because it can be more sustainable. While heavily processed bamboo is not by any means the most sustainable textile in the world, bamboo is fast growing and can have some benefits. Viscose is usually made with wood pulp and can be sourced unsustainably from ancient forests. A good option is to look for fibers, both viscose, rayon, lyocell and bamboo that is processed in a closed loop system, which is the case for instance with tensile. Tensile is actually not a material, it is the name of a company that is producing lyocell in a closed loop system. These closed loop systems use less chemicals and less water and there's also an equivalent of a closed loop system bamboo material which is called monocell. Now let's get into the bamboo claims. This is spicy. The first one being bamboo clothing is UV resistant. Any type of tightly woven material or textile has some level of UV protection effects. So this claim is true but it's not uniquely specific to bamboo clothing and I often see it used as being something you can advertise bamboo clothing through and any type of clothing is really UV resistant to some extent and bamboo is not in any way shape or form more UV resistant than other types of materials. Heck, you could just put on a sack or you could put on a cardboard box and that would also be UV resistant. So it's very misleading when it's used as this unique ability of bamboo clothing. Bamboo clothing is antibacterial. Okay, while natural raw bamboo has antibacterial properties like the pest repellent as well. There's absolutely no evidence to support that those qualities are transferred into the material when it undergoes chemical processing. It does not. Our bamboo is Ecotech certified and free of harsh chemicals is my absolute fave and I have, I have a bone to pick with people right now. I have seen the Ecotech standard and Ecotech certification being used as an argument against the criticism of the harshly chemically produced bamboo products. But it's important to note that the Ecotech standard ensures that there are no dangerous chemicals left in the clothes so that they are safe for our bodies to use. And that's good news for our health because it means that the clothes that we're wearing do not have a negative health effect on us. And that's nice, but it does absolutely nothing for the environment. It does not ensure that there has been no harsh chemicals used throughout the supply chain. That is not what this certification is about. I need to see brands stop using the Ecotech standard to say to people that their products are environmentally safe and chemical free. It's not what the certification is about at all. This is really a pet peeve of mine. I don't know if you could tell. Now this is a little bit within the same area, but I've also seen a lot of brands using the Our Bamboo is chemical free. Okay, I have thoughts. <laughs> because while bamboo can actually be grown completely without any chemicals, completely without any pesticides, it's very rarely the truth. For instance, the majority of bamboo is grown in China and they have no restrictions to minimize pesticide use in bamboo production. There are no regulations in place to make sure that farmers aren't using excessive amounts of pesticides and it's basically impossible for consumers to figure out if the supply chain they're supporting 
does something or does nothing to ensure that no excess amount of pesticides are being used. Again, this is something that I talk more about in the other bamboo video, so take a look at that if you're interested. Now, this is what spokeswoman for the Soil Association, who certifies organic crops, Sarah Compton, said about bamboo textiles. The production of bamboo would fall under our perennial crop standards, so in theory we could certify the crop. But the problem is the processing. The process needed to break down bamboo fibers is very similar to that used to make viscose, and we've yet to see a method that would come anywhere close to complying with our production standards. People always say bamboo is great because it grows quickly, but so does cotton. And again, I've also made an impact video about cotton, so if you're interested in the pros and cons of this material, I suggest you watch it. And the last one, bamboo clothing does not release microplastic, which is true. They get this one. This, that, that, that is true. The types of synthetics like bamboo textiles, viscose, rayon, etc. are still, even when undergoing significant chemical processing, still plant-based. Microplastics are only released through textiles that are based on petroleum, aka plastic like nylon, acrylic and polyester, etc. And that's everything I have to say about bamboo clothing. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. Let me know down below if you have any questions about bamboo clothing or any other types of questions. I am all ears and I'm right here. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, that would make my day. Thank you so much for watching. Take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste content and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!